what kind of insurance do you need to have in place when you start your business? That is the question that I'm going to answer today, my friends, and stick with me till the end because I am going to tell you the number one biggest mistake that I've seen people make in the industry. Hey there, my friends, this is Kelly Schaefer. I am the creator of the Concierge Academy and also the author of The Concierge Life. I am a retired registered nurse who took her love of taking care of others and started a personal concierge business in my local town back in 2010, and then started helping others start their own businesses since 2014. I'm also a certified life coach and a mom of four. So getting your business insured, I am telling you up front, may be one of the hardest things that you do as you're getting started. And the reason being because there is not a fancy little code for our industry. A lot of other industries out there have a specific code that they can say, I'm a roofer, I'm a plumber, I'm an electrician. And the insurance brokers and the insurance companies of the world have this fancy little code that they use and they just plug it into the system and it kicks out a policy for them. Our industry, although it has grown in popularity for the last 20 years, still does not have a specific code. So I want to share with you how I teach my students in my programs about how to go about getting insured. And so one of the first things you really want to get clear about are the list of services that you're going to offer. You want to get clear up front, what will you do and what will you not do as far as the services that you are going to offer to your clients. So for example, maybe what you will do is run errands, but what you won't do is um, cleaning services, right? Maybe what you will do is go grocery shopping, but what you won't do is climb a ladder to hang curtains, right? So there are certain things that you want to consider and question and think through that will help better inform the insurance agent, the insurance broker, and the insurance company about how to properly insure you. So number one is what are the lists of services that you're going to offer? And also consider the things that you know up front that you will not be offering. The second thing that you really want to think through is will you be transporting or moving people, pets, or property? Because this is something, again, that the insurance broker and the insurance companies are going to want to know. Are you driving and transporting people, pets, and property? Because I will tell you, a lot of people think that they can just have a general insurance policy that's going to cover everything, and that's not 100% true. The third thing you want to do, and this was something that I did when I was first starting and I was getting my very first policy, is I came up with a list of scenarios. And I literally asked the insurance agent, okay, so let's just say I am driving down I-95 and I have just picked up a $5,000 suit from the dry cleaner that belongs to my client. And I happen to have the window down and the $5,000 suit goes out the window. Is it covered? And they would answer me. And then I'd say, okay, let's say, for example, I'm in a client's home and I'm carrying groceries and in the attempt to carry all the bags into the house, I accidentally bump into a $2,000 vase. It falls, it breaks, and it shatters into a thousand pieces. Would I be covered? And they would answer me. And then through me coming up with, honestly, some crazy scenarios, That also helped me get clear based on what they said, yes, this would be covered. No, that wouldn't be covered. Yes, this would be covered. It actually helped define some of the services I would not do because I wanted to make sure that we were properly covered. Okay, so list of services, 
Are you transporting people, pets, or property? Think of some crazy scenarios. And then the next thing you want to do is go out and have a broker. Enlist the expertise of an insurance broker instead of going to one specific insurance company. If you go to a broker, the broker usually has access to an entire list of different uh, companies that may or may not write that policy for you. The beauty of having a broker do the work is the broker is doing the work for you and they will help you get the policy that will best fit all of your needs based off of those services that you're offering, whether you're transporting people, pets, or property, and even perhaps some of those crazy ass scenarios <laughs> that you offered up as well. That is how to make sure that you are properly insured. Now, I want to tell you about the biggest mistake that I have seen people make. And honestly, it's a huge red flag. And I want to make you aware of this because I've seen this happen many, many times in our industry. I'm just going to put a for example. Let's say, for example, you decide that um, you, you get your insurance policy and your insurance policy does not cover transporting people, right? So for example, let's say you're working in the senior industry and you're driving seniors back and forth to doctor's appointments. Now there are ways of doing this and that is for a discussion for a later time, um, but that's not for this video, but let's just say that is one of the services that you want to offer. And then as you research it and you find out what is required for you to offer those services to be properly insured, you decide, nah, I don't want to do that. So then you decide not to offer services, transporting people, driving, escorting, driving people back and forth to doctor's offices. But then you go ahead and you put driving people back and forth to doctor's offices on your website. I will tell you that sometimes the insurance companies go around and they will audit your websites. I've seen this done dozens and dozens of times. And then what happens is all of a sudden you get a letter in the mail and an email saying that they've dropped you from their policy. This actually happened to me in my very first year of being in business. Something I did, something I said, somehow they dropped me from their policy. Thankfully, I had an insurance broker and then he just went out and basically found another policy uh, for me to have for my business. And I had no disruption in our services at all. But make sure that once you have your policy in place, and if you have said, I'm not going to do these things, but then on your website, you post that I'm going to do these things. I'm telling you right now, my friends, do not do that. Big red flag for being audited. If this video was helpful for you, please make sure you hit that like button and hit up that subscribe bell so that you don't miss any other upcoming episodes. Bye for now, my friends.